Good afternoon and welcome to this Council briefing on the last day of the LWF Council. This morning the Council voted to approve a new strategy for the LWF and uh, we have with us the LWF President, Archbishop Panti Philippus Musa and the LWF General Secretary, Reverend Dr. Martin Junge, and they are going to answer a few questions about this. The, the title of the strategy is uh, With Passion for the Church and for the World. Maybe if we begin by asking you, Mr. General Secretary, um, can, can you explain the title? Yes, uh, this is a title which in a nutshell conveys uh, some of our uh, very fundamental commitments. Um, the LWF is a communion of churches and uh, it sees a special responsibility of stewarding the gift of the church and to continue nurturing with the world and also in view of what the church is doing in the world, uh, the, the life of the church, enhancing its witness in the world. At the same time, the title expresses that the LWF and the communion does not understand itself as confined into itself. It is not an end in itself, but the LWF understands its life as one that is engaged in the world. So that's where the title, with passion for the church and the world, comes from. The LWF is a communion of churches with a strong heartbeat for the life of the church and with a strong heart, heartbeat and commitment for what is happening in the world and how it relates to what God wants this world to be. President Musa, um, what does the strategy mean for the LWF and, and, and for the churches? Thank you very much. First of all, um, I'm really happy that the Council has uh, adopted this strategy, five-year strategy for the work of the LWF. This strategy, as uh, alluded or mentioned earlier, is not an end in itself, it's an instrument. We consider this as an instrument, first of all, that uh, makes very clear our shared understanding as a communion, how we understand ourselves as a communion, and how we understand ourselves as a communion being in the world. The essence of the, of the strategy then is to give us that sense of uh, common sense of direction. But it is also a tool that uh, will help us to ensure mutual accountability of what we agreed, uh, the shared agreements of, uh, that we have regarding our identity, our work, um, and our visibility and presence in the world, the, the strategy will become then an instrument for us to go back and forth to, in order to um, be mutually accountable to one another as a global communion, but also as member churches. It is my hope and desire that this instrument um, that we, are, we have adopted at the global level will also become an instrument to inspire member churches within their own uh, local context as they seek also to participate in the life of the communion, in the commitments that the communion has made. Um, my prayer and hope that the member churches will, will pick this up and, and it will help them also to participate actively so that uh, we are dealing both with the global approaches when it comes to the work of the LWF, but also local approaches. And these two, our hope is that they are held together. And this, that is the value, the critical importance of the strategy so that we are coordinated in our work. We may be differentiated in the, in the steps we are taking depending on the level, but we have a shared understanding regarding our journey as a communion of churches. There are certain things in the strategy that are affirmed from the, from the former strategy, the vision of the LWF and, and also the values, but it also sets forth new strategic priorities. Uh, could, well, either of you expand on that a little bit? 
Well, I will begin. Uh, indeed, uh, we are not at a point where we need to reinvent the Lutheran World Federation. The Lutheran World Federation has a solid trajectory and uh, what this strategy is all about is to outline the next steps of what we see and believe we want to be doing together. Now, uh, we have still uh, uh, shared values, uh, the name of the strategy, uh, most of the commitments which are there are commitments um, which are not new in a way, but uh, where we are saying in view of these commitments which we have been holding, what is it that we want to do new now? In this regard, I see a much stronger emphasis on communion and communion building as the foundation, but then also as the gift the LWF member churches want to steward in a more uh, intentional way. I see a stronger uh, prominence of uh, a work which has been done uh, for many, many uh, years already, particularly during the last seven years under the leadership of young people, when uh, they helped the whole communion uh, to be more aware of the challenge of climate justice and to address it as churches and as a communion of churches. That has received a much stronger prominence in this strategy. I can also see that uh, on our ongoing commitments of participation of women in the life of the church, ensuring uh, space um, for that participation at all levels, it remains, but it outlines also in more concrete ways what we will be doing next. The same with youth, where we have a strong commitment to include them, and where we are linking the whole question of the renewal of the church and also the, the medium-term perspective of the church, particularly in contexts where churches are decreasing in membership, to link up with young people who have vision and hopes for the church and which need to be heard as we develop and as churches develop that vision for the future. Maybe thus far some of the few issues I would be mentioning from my end. Thank you. Maybe I could um, say further that for us as a communion and as member churches, we recognize that the very being of the church now and into the future um, requires that we pay very close attention to uh, bringing in young people, giving them the space to develop their gifts and to bring it into the lives of the churches. Um, th that's the future of the communion. That's also the future of the churches. So they are, for us as LWF, we recognize that young people are not only leaders waiting for another future. They are today uh, very active, as we have seen prior to the assembly, and we affirm this very strongly in this strategy, similarly for women. What this strategy has also uh, made very clear is that uh, we are farming the gains that we have had uh, regarding our ecumenical engagement. The dialogues that we have had with the various uh, uh, denominations and communions, we are not going back. We are, we are committed to building on those uh, wonderful steps that we have made uh, moving into the future, no longer in the spirit of blaming and castigating each other as different denominations, but with humility accepting our previous mistakes and yet not being caught uh, only in our past mistakes, but looking to the future with hope that we can more and more build understanding among the churches, but even beyond the churches also recognizing that in the world today, that God has called us to be church. We are not the only players. There are many players. There are other religious bodies. There are other international organizations, particularly, for example, when it comes to the question of peace in the world today. Um, it is something that requires everybody to participate. And hence, for us, we recognize the critical importance of reaching out to various religious bodies and various international organs in, in trying to, to foster a spirit of, of peace and shared understanding in the world. It is very important for me also to mention the reaffirmation, strong reaffirmation of our diaconal work that takes place both in the member churches but also through our global 
or our international instrument, the Department, Department of, for World Service, that is now responsible uh, for millions of people around the world, displaced people living in camps. Uh, we have a very uh, uh, strong affirmation of the work that the World Service will be doing in the years to come, because it is not over. People are still um, displaced, people are scattered, people are searching for homes, uh, people are rendered homeless even in, in places that they are called home. The church has a responsibility, and as communion, we have a responsibility. Hence, for us, um, we, we want to find ways to continue to support the world service in its work. But we also want to encourage the churches to uh, uh, strengthen their diaconal response and prophetic actions in their local context when it comes to various questions and the challenges we are facing. I, I think I can say these are some of the things that we want to highlight in this strategy as we move uh, into the future. Thank you. Uh, we have a question. Yes. General Secretary, if you would allow uh, two questions in German. Um, zunächst die erste Frage. Um, eine Strategie ist selbstverständlich immer allgemein und muss gewisse Richtung vorgeben und es ist schwer, Sachen uh, an konkreten Punkten jetzt schon zu sagen. Aber wenn ich uh, Sie verlocken könnte, einmal darüber nachzudenken, am Ende dieser Strategie, wo steht der LWB? Ähm, zum Beispiel bei einzelnen Themen wie Jugendbeteiligung, Klimagerechtigkeit. Was ist in fünf Jahren, in sechs Jahren erreicht? Was ist anders als der heutige Stand? Ja, vielen Dank. Natürlich muss eine Strategie heruntergebrochen werden in Programmarbeit. Und äh, das muss dann auch umgesetzt werden. Und äh, wir freuen uns jetzt mit diesem Mandat, mit dieser Strategie, die beschlossen wurde, ähm, äh, weiterzuarbeiten und diese Programme jetzt auch zu entwickeln. Ich sehe äh, den LWB ähm, ähm, in verschiedenen Szenarien, wenn man jetzt in, in fünf Jahren denkt. Ähm, ich denke, der LWB und die Mitgliedskirchen des LWBs äh, werden Fortschritte gemacht haben im Hinblick auf den, die Einbeziehung von jungen Menschen in, in, in ihren Gremien. Äh, darum geht es ja unter, unter anderem auch. Und äh, wir stellen uns vor, dass wir äh, Instrumente, aber auch Plattformen herstellen wollen, global gesehen, wo ähm, Kirchen, die da auch voranschreiten wollen, und wir hören so viele Kirchen, die das jetzt auch wollen, wo wir äh, Kirchen äh, begleiten können und befähigen können, um diese Schritte zu tun. Ähm, ich sehe äh, den LWB äh, auch äh, insofern, oder unsere Mitgliedskirchen sehe ich, dass sie in der Lage gewesen sind, die Fragen zu ihrer Mission in ihrem gegenwärtigen Kontext aufzunehmen, zu reflektieren, aber dann auch umzusetzen. Ich würde mich freuen, wenn vom LWB Impulse ausgehen könnten, mit denen Kirchen sich selber weiterdenken könnten im Hinblick auf die nächsten 10 und 15 Jahren und wie wir darauf hinarbeiten unter sehr veränderten Kontexten. Ich sehe den LWB als eine starke öffentliche Stimme, äh, international, regional, aber auch lokal, um äh, an, an den Anliegen, die äh, die Gerechtigkeit anbelangen und äh, Friedensarbeit äh, anbelangen, äh, wo der LWB sich tatkräftig und engagiert beteiligen wird. Ich sehe den LWB in der Frage der Gendergerechtigkeit äh, auch darin, wichtige Fortschritte äh, zu machen. Äh, ich habe mich sehr gefreut, dass in der Strategie, die jetzt auch angenommen ist, der entscheidende Schritt gemacht wird, dass äh, Genderfragen nicht mehr als Fragen von Frauen und für Frauen angesehen werden, sondern dass jetzt auch der entscheidende Schritt getan wurde, Gender, Fragen zur Gendergerechtigkeit müssen auch von Männern aufgenommen werden. Auch hier müssen Rollen überdacht und angepasst werden. Das ist ein ganz entscheidender Fortschritt und ich hoffe und bete und will auch alles dran setzen von meiner am Ende, dass wir da auch glaubhafte, schöne weitere Schritte zurückgelegt haben. Meine zweite Frage wäre, ähm die Strategie ist die Strategie des Lutherischen Weltbundes, soll aber in Verbindung mit den Mitgliedskirchen natürlich gelebt werden. Wie haben Sie das vor und wie wäre äh, gerade für die deutschen K 
Kirchen? Wo wären da Anknüpfpunkte, die Sie sehen? Wie, wie wollen Sie das äh, erreichen? Also nochmal zur Entstehungsgeschichte der Strategie. Die, die Strategie nimmt die Impulse auf, die 145 Mitgliedskirchen auf ihrer Vollversammlung in Namibia, äh, Windhoek, im letzten Jahr zum Ausdruck gebracht haben. Das war ein ganz privilegierter Moment, wo äh, Kirchen zusammengekommen sind, wie sie das nur alle sieben Jahre tun. Und da haben Kirchen gemeinsam reflektiert und haben auch gemeinsam zum Ausdruck gebracht, was sie gemeinsam darstellen wollen, was sie gemeinsam tun wollen, was für ein Zeugnis sie als LWB, als lutherische Gemeinschaft in der Welt ablegen wollen. Das ersetzt natürlich nicht, was Kirchen lokal vor Ort aus ihrem Kontext heraus und in ihrem Kontext tun müssen. Aber natürlich stellt sich die Frage, wie verbindet sich das? Was wir vorhaben, ist diese Strategie an unsere 100, nun 48 Mitgliedskirchen zu schicken und ähm, die Frage zu stellen, wo kommen Sie hier darin vor? Wo werden Sie Ihre Rolle sehen, um diese Musik, die wir gemeinsam erklingen, zum Erklingen bringen wollen, um diese Musik auch tatsächlich zum Ausdruck zu bringen? Was ist Ihr Beitrag? Und äh, ich denke, meine Wunschvorstellung wäre, dass Kirchen diese Frage in ihren Räten, vielleicht sogar auf einer Synodalversammlung, erörtern werden. Äh, denn so wie für uns im Gemeinschaftsbüro die nächsten Jahre natürlich nicht Business as usual sein können, so denke ich auch, dass dieser Ausdruck der Strategie auch für die Kirchen vor Ort kein Business as usual darstellen kann, im Hinblick auf das, was sie in Windhoek gemeinsam gesagt haben, als etwas, das ihnen wichtig ist, als etwas, woran sie gemeinsam arbeiten wollen. Auf dieses Gespräch freue ich mich sehr. Und wie gesagt, wir werden es anregen, indem wir einen Brief mit diesen Fragen an die Kirchen schicken und die Kirchen bitten, das womöglich auch in ihren äh, äh, Leitungsgremien zu diskutieren. Thank you for that. Returning to English. Uh, looking forward, uh, now the Council has approved the strategy. What, what are the next steps? How will we take this forward? Well, I got that question in German, and I tried to respond to that one. I, I will make the beginning, and I would believe that the, the president of the LWF will be, uh, as a church leader, uh, will be also very much be in a position to say what he would be doing uh, as, as not only as a president, but as, as a church leader. We will uh, be sending this strategy to 145 member churches, which are now 148, because this council received through three new churches. And we will ask the churches, where do you contribute? What is it that you can offer in order to contribute towards that witness, which as a communion of churches we want to offer in this world? And um, because the strategy is not something which comes out of the blue, the commitments it expresses, the directions it's of, it offers, the focus areas it na names and identifies, these are reflective of what LWF member churches said together when they met one year ago in Windhoek, Namibia. So this is all what they have said they want to be and do together. Now that this has been put into one document of only 12 pages, the question is going to be brought forward so. This is how we have organized these commitments. Where do you come in? What is it that you want to contribute, you are able to contribute in this context? Well, I think then the, um, what that entails is uh, then for the churches themselves to take the strategy and try to articulate it articulate the issues that have been identified in this strategy, again, depending on their social, political, and their realities on ground. 
And I suppose that uh, each member church is living in a specific context, and therefore the strategies that have been identified in the document would also be articulated differently. So my expectation, and what I will be doing uh, also as a church leader, is to bring this back home and um, to own it at the local level as far as the issues, concrete issues that are involved. For example, when we talked about earlier, we talked about the, the, our reaffirmation of our sense of uh, um, identity as a community, communi communion that um, so much recognizes the role of uh, young people, the role of women. How do I then bring this into our own uh, strategy also as we move on on a daily basis? I think this is what we expect from the churches. We expect also that um, our theological institutions will be able to take uh, from here concrete resolutions and uh, concrete steps that have been taken in order to foster theological education and formation will become then uh, very important for our theological institutions. Also in the way they try to network uh, among themselves, this will become a very important instrument. Now, again, as something that holds us together at the global level, but then something that, is, that has to be implemented concretely in different ways at the local level. I think when we come back here to the to the communion office, it also means that uh, that even the way we walk as a communion will have to be reflected. We will have to reflect and perhaps reorganize ourselves in response to the to the strategy, so that uh, the 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 way we walk will then we will be determined by what we have said in the strategy. And I suppose in the next few months before the meeting of the executive committee in November, the general secretary and the staff in the communion office will reflect on this in more concrete ways. What does it mean regarding the human resources that we have, but also the financial resources that we have here at the communion office. Thank you both for that. Uh, we have a new strategy with passion for the church and for the world. And we have a plan to share it with the churches. Uh, I invite you to visit our website, lutheranworld.org, where you can read the new strategy and you can also follow the council. Thank you for being with us today and have a good continuation of it. Thank you.